We've got a great video here today, but before that, if you don't know, I'm giving away one paddle, one of my paddles, every month to a subscriber. So all you have to do is just subscribe to the channel and you could get one of my paddles and you know, it means a lot to me. So let's jump into today's video. This tournament we're playing Atlanta Slam. There's a lot that rides on one of these slams. They have 2000 points, whereas the opens have only 1000. And most of the tournaments a year are opens. There's a few cups that have 1500. So a 2000 tournament this weekend is a big deal. And in this video, you know, we're going to focus on the mental game. I've been working on my mental game for a long time. Uh, it's probably been the most improved part of my pickleball career. So the mental game is so important. And before this tournament, I listened to an audiobook called It Takes What It Takes by Trevor something. It was a great book. I listened to it on my drive up to Atlanta and it really helped me, you know, take strides in my mental game. Some of the, you know, some of the key things that I took out of the book were staying neutral. I might talk about this more as we go on, but you know, staying neutral just means if I'm losing or doing bad, don't, don't get too mad. You don't have to be happy, but just stay neutral because it's very easy. It's a lot easier to go from being neutral to happy than being negative to happy. So that's a key thing. And then the other main theme or the other really important lesson I, I took from the book is to be very aware of what's going on. He explains it in three, three thoughts. So think about it in three stages. What has happened, my opponent is playing better than me. Or my, or my opponent is playing well. What is happening? I'm down 7-2. What is going to happen? That's the harder part, but I usually say I'm going to keep fighting. Like I'm going to keep being consistent or I'm going to change up my strategy. Like it allows you to put the past in the past when you think about it very like very clear or very divisional. Like you can just, all right, that's the past. I know what's happening in the present and it really helps you to look towards the future. So, I mean, those are some things that if you click the video, just cause you wanted to figure out right away, what are, what are the keys or how I win the mental game? Those are some of the, those are some of the main topics and themes that I've been implementing into my game. So stick around to watch me have some highs and lows against players like Jack Sock, Federico Staxford, Dylan Fraser, JW Johnson. I hope you enjoyed the video. For the vlog, we made it. Christian's going in. Oh, tweener. Vlog. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the. What's up, guys? Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Yeah. What's up, guys? Yeah. I'm gonna teach you how to do a tweener today. I think my YouTube voice is pretty mild compared to most. Too. What? You have to do that. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Hey. <laughs> okay. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> And I actually have my car right now. 
this is this is literally my, my my car. I drove up here from Florida. Anyway, so let's 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 talk about today a little bit. I was today's the round of 16. I had three matches. My first match was against Jack Sock and he came out firing, played super well at the start. Dude, there's so many bugs out here. I'm going I'm going back in the car. This is why I don't record outside the car. There were actually a ton of bugs and I'm not even like I don't I don't really care about bugs. Anyway, Jack Sock. Yeah, I mean, he he's an interesting guy. He did well in tennis. He's been playing pickleball for over a year now. Let's talk about the match. I mean, it was a close it really was a close battle, but I, you know, I had a I had a plan going in, and the first six points, five, six points, the plan did not work at all. Same as the last time I played him. So, like, times like that in pickleball, like, it's quick, so you don't have a lot of time to kind of change up your plan. I changed up the plan, and it started working. I mean, the fact that I came back from about 5-1 or 6-1 in the first was huge. And then the second, we had some crazy points. Hopefully, we can include some of them. And then the, the second, I mean, I kind of just went away with it he missed a lot of returns and i mean in singles if you're missing returns you're going to lose the match most of the time because i mean if you miss a return that's a point if you miss a serve your opponent your opponent doesn't get a point so yeah i beat him there was a little bit of chirping at the end i'll, I'll be transparent he said i was down nine four i don't know if we'll include this but i was i was up nine four in the second and there was a timeout at like 5-4 and I won like four points in a row and at 9-4 I yelled at, I, I let out like a come on or like something like that like I, I let out some emotion and he goes like he goes chill bro you're gonna win and I was just like the whole time the whole match he, he was talking and he was trying to you know depressurize if you will and then he said that I won the next point so I go up 10-4 and then he takes a timeout and I walk by him and I go a champ would never say that because like I took offense to a comment like that. I mean, this guy is like, I just took offense to a comment like that. Like you're going to give up. Like you're going to like, sounds like somebody who's defeated, like who's giving up, like, which, yeah, that's awesome. But I mean, you're supposed to be like, you know, he, he cares a lot and he was losing. So he was acting like he doesn't care and it, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not bothered, but I'm for the first time I made a comment to him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we should include this, but that that's my thought on those are my thoughts on the singles match mixed doubles. Vivian Glossman and I split with Ben and Anna Lee. I mean, I split with Ben and Anna Lee every time I play them, and I haven't beaten them yet, which is crazy. And today was just another one of those days. I think today was we were more of an underdog than the last few times I played them, just because of Vivian's lack of experience in in pickleball, mixed doubles, or just in pickleball. So I felt we were more of an underdog, which was good for both of us. stayed stayed loose. I hit a I went for a couple burts in the third game, and the first one I stepped in the kitchen the second one i got called also for the kitchen and i the first one the first one i like looked around and like i heard i saw like one kid like nod or somebody in the stand like nod it's like okay because you can't always just nice to have multiple opinion or multiple references and the second one same thing i'm trying to like look around i'm looking does like anybody like did anybody see that and i didn't have a coach in my corner this match unfortunately but you know neither did my opponent that's the way it is right now. And nobody said anything like, and I was like, whatever. Usually the refs are really good about the feet because it's the only thing they're watching. And somebody came up to me af after like saying that they rewatched it closely and that it was not, I was not in the kitchen. That's like, that was the, we switched at six, four. Those first, that first half was huge. I missed, that's the difference between six, four and five, five. If we switch up six, five, I mean, think about it. Like, it adds a ton of pressure to our opponents, which they weren't playing great. And, I mean, they had pressure. And if we could have kept that pressure up in the third, it would have been it would have been good. But we didn't, and it's all good. Garnett and I, I mean, I don't know if we know this, if you guys know this, but Garnett is really struggling with his serve right now. He's, he's missing a lot. Our first round, he missed between 6 and 10. And, I mean, in, in doubles, you just can't be missing serves. Because, like, you're not getting any free points in doubles. In singles, it's okay if you miss some serves, but still, that's too many. But in doubles, you just can't miss You can't miss your serve. You just can't. You're not getting any free points, so every serve you miss, you're just losing. So I talked to him today, and I was like, hey. Because he he's missing it because he's going for it. And 
I don't know if he he feels like he needs to go for it. And I told him before a match, like, <clears throat> do this. And you literally just pancake it in. Like, just top, like you're, you're a professional athlete. You should be able to make 50, 100 serves in a row if you want to. And, like, we did it, and I, like, told him, like, hey, just hit it soft like this. Don't even go for it. Like, you're not going to – you're not gaining anything by by the really good serves. It's not worth missing half of them. And he did it, and we practiced it a little bit, and we went into the round of 16 today, and he didn't miss a single serve. Like, that's – like, that's good. Like, that's good. Like, that's – it's it's mental. It's, it's 100% mental. You could call it the yips, I guess. I don't know. I'm hoping for his, but, I mean – ultimately my sake that he figures it out like I care about him because he's on my team all right I mean sure like I mean he's my opponent in in singles and mixed doubles so it's it's tough out here with partners and stuff hold up I'm turning the car on anyway we took out Hayden and Callan we took out Hayden Patrick Quinn and Callan Dawson it was close it was like 11 8 11 9 him and I, we did a good job of playing both right and left sides. We were switching, which is awesome because in the past, he's only played the left. MLP with Riley, he played the right a little bit, so he was used to it. Him and I had talked about it because sometimes if you are if you stay on one side, your opponent can get into solid patterns and get really comfortable. So we, we took that away from, from them. Yeah, so we played well. Yeah, so two out of three quarters. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Probably be listening to um, Ice Ice Baby by uh, NSYNC, or no, Vanilla Ice, or Backstreet Boys. All right, well, I decided that this vlog is going to be about mental strength, mental fortitude, you know, the ability to stay calm in tight situations, stay neutral. And I just lost the quarterfinals of men's doubles with Garnett to J-Dub and Dylan. And I want to break things. It's, it's literally been like four minutes since since the last night. I went straight to my car. And man, I do not want to talk to see anyone. Somebody just said thank you to me and I had a smile. Or somebody just said good match and I had to smile. Which yeah, I'm, yeah, even if I lose, usually I'm fine and I've been getting better at it. But this match, man, this match we were we sh we, we were winning. We were playing well and we both fumbled the bag in the third. We both did. I wish I could go back. Oh, I wish wish I could go back. This whole tournament, I've done a really good job of staying mentally strong. In all my matches, at every point, even in this last match, I did a really good job until the very end of staying mentally strong and not getting mad and not doing dumb things. I mean, the second you stop remaining calm is when you do dumb things. And I've done a really good job of staying calm this whole tournament. And losing it's just really upsetting because i i we had it anyway i'm in the semis tomorrow let's go
All right, let's do a quick end of match slash end of tournament recap. So I just played the third and fourth men's singles against Tyson McGuffin. Had a game point in the first. He ended up winning the first. I was also down 5-0 in the first, so came back from that. But lost that. So, I mean, after losing that first game, you know, making a little bit of a comeback, having a game, po having a game point, it was kind of brutal. It was like, dang, I was exhausted for this last match. I didn't eat a big breakfast, which means I didn't have the which means I didn't have the necessary calories I needed to play a long match, which is my fault, but it was hot. I mean, it's the end of a two, a two week tournament. Like we had MLP and then now this tournament, which was back to back, it was, it was a lot, it was a lot. So exhausted, but I tried to stay relaxed. And you know, to be honest, this match, I, I was actually a little bit more uneasy than a lot of my other matches then the second i mean i pull out the second i'm playing well it's tight it's like seven seven i'm just trying to make my return and hit good serves and then the third i'm i think i'm up seven five or i'm up seven five then he goes up nine seven and then it was it was a crazy close match maybe eight all nine eight on oh, no, those i'm serving there's just some crazy points it was really close it was like a like, I mean, that was probably the tight, that was the tightest match I've played all week, without a doubt. Like that third, nine all, I, I went 11-9 in the third. He missed, he missed two returns for me to win the match, but I missed two returns at like seven all for him to go up 9-7. So, I mean, that was huge because I was physically drained for that match. And I just kept focusing on my breathing and focusing on just, you know, staying relaxed, like, you know, stressing out isn't gonna do anything. Like, it's not gonna help at all. So, like, my only real choice is to just, like, relax. Like, just breathe and just, you know, try and win. So, pulled away with that one. Let's go. It's funny, I'm, I'm, I'm so hungry right now. All I've had all day is a small oatmeal from Starbucks. And I should have gone to First Watch to get the bigger breakfast that I've eaten a couple times this tournament. Anyway, end of tournament. So we're done. I mean, we made it. Ended with a medal. That's huge. Like, like, that's good. I mean, last tournament, I also ended with a bronze medal in singles and against Tyson McGuffin again, which is funny. But it doesn't feel as good this time as it does last time because I want more. You know, I want to, like, I want to be, like, I'm there. Like, I, I, like, I want to make it to the finals. Like, I, that was also tough for me. So, I mean, overall good tournament. I think we're making great strides with, with the mental the mental game of it. I mean, pickleball is so mental. I noticed when, ever since I've started, you know, staying mentally stable on the court is when I started to do better. It makes such a big difference being relaxed and during those big points. Because if you're, those, the big points in pickleball, you know, the eight alls, the nine alls, like the big points, you know, the long points that like are, back and forth, five, seven. It's the big points that you really just have to stay calm, cool and collected. You've got to stay neutral because staying neutral is going to give you your best opportunity at winning that point. If you're a little like antsy or whatever, you're not going to play as well. So, I mean, that was the name or that was the theme of this, of this weekend was to try and stay mentally strong. I've, you know, it's been the theme of a few tournaments, but I feel like I've made great, I feel like I've made big strides. So I really wanted to just like focus on that for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I mean, if, if you made it this far, I say this every time, but consider subscribing it. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, I mean, Hey, if you like the video, subscribe. Peace.